Well, uh, I believe that we are living in the last generation on planet Earth as it is today. And I believe that God is getting everyone's attention so that no one will be lost without having had an opportunity to see the truth and accept it and to make the necessary changes. I believe that I was the only one that volunteered at the time when God was ready to reveal all these things. And like my critics uh, say, it's impossible for one person to find all these things. And that's true. But all things are possible through God. And he simply revealed all of these things in a manner where no one should be misled as to who has revealed this. I'm not clever enough to have found all these places and uh, objects. So this is something that God has taken into his own hands and is doing a show and tell presentation of his treasures, his archaeological treasures, in a manner that is designed to strengthen the faith of the believers and to convince those who have seen no good reason to believe what Christians have to say, to convince them that the Bible is historically accurate and divinely inspired. Well, the Bible makes a statement that there was a time of ignorance that God winked at, but now he calls all men to repentance. I believe that those who pass through the grave are not required to know as much as those of us who will be alive at the coming of the Lord. And so God has reserved all of these for this special occasion, special time. Now, people are pack rats, and if the whereabouts of these events were known from years uh, past, there would probably be nothing left there that would prove uh, what had taken place because it would have all got been carried off sold as uh, antiques or uh, amulets, uh, some sort of uh, magical material, and uh, or had big church buildings built over it or mosques or something. So I believe that God hid all of these things from human knowledge until he was ready to show it. And I believe that you and I must have a perfect relationship with God so that we can survive the coming of the Lord because all sinners will not survive that experience. Well, uh, Satan has been around and was present at all the major events that have happened the, the flood, for example, in the landing of Noah's Ark, he has known exactly where that uh, boat remains were. And he has become aware that God is preserving these things. It's my belief that when Satan realized that God was going to bring these things out to convince people of the truth and historical accuracy of the Bible, that he raised up individuals who he could influence to be less than honest about what they had seen. These people, he led them to make statements that indicated that they had seen Noah's Ark in many places other than where it really is. Now it's tragic and it's hard to believe that people would deliberately deceive folks but I believe that most of you are aware that it's not only the governments of the different countries that 
tend to withhold information from the people in their countries, their kingdoms, or whatever. But there are many people who are willing to tell lies just to get a little extra attention or maybe to sell a book. And so Satan has flooded the world with stories about the locations of Noah's Ark, the Red Sea Crossing, and many other uh, events of Scripture for the express purpose of clouding the issue, lessening the impact, lessening the credibility of the true discovery when it happened. And I believe that that is the reason for all of these many claims, none of which are substantiated by photographic evidence or objects taken from these sites or filmed at these sites. And I believe that you and I must be very careful about what we believe, and we must ask for proof. The thing that, uh, shall we say, kind of wraps this up as far as my thinking is concerned. Now the Bible tells us that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man comes to this earth. Now, if we believe those words, they're God's own words, and he does not lie or exaggerate. Then there were scientists before the flood. And there were probably creationist scientists and evolutionary scientists. In fact, there had to be these individuals. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says that there had been no rain upon the earth in those days before the flood. And here Noah was preaching that it was going to rain so much, in fact, that all life on this planet would be wiped out, would be drowned. And he built, was building this boat, and he invited people to come. Well, I'm sure that there were these scientists uh, that positioned themselves nearby so that the groups of folks that had listened to what Noah had to say would pass by and they would say now if you folks would like to hear a little scientific uh, evaluation of what this crazy man is saying uh, then listen to me and so they obviously were very very persuasive because in the end only Noah and his family and members of each family of animals were saved on the ark. And so it's no surprise that today that we have scientists in the category of creationist scientists, evolutionary scientists, both opposing what we are doing. Now, this is not something that Ron Wyatt is doing. This is something that God is doing. And he has allowed me to find and document and we have attempted to be very thorough in these documentations so that people, if they have a high regard for truth, will see the truth of what is being presented. Now, Paul, who was a, had been preaching for a number of years, wrote a letter to Timothy, who had, was new in this evangelistic work of the first century, and he told him to be uh, avoid, shall we say, some of the things that were taking place. He says, avoid vain repetition, avoid vain babblings, and opposition of science, falsely so-called. And it's up to those who look at these materials to decide what they want to believe. And we have provided evidence that is irrefutable. 
uh, there's a large number of people that don't come to see the presentations because of the comments that these so-called scientists and specialists in the fields have uh, made. Well, that's sad. And there's no way to help anybody that won't go and see things for themselves. Uh, there's no shame in telling these people, well, I want to see it for myself. It sounds quite unlikely, but I want to see and see if there is evidence to support the claims of these discoveries. Now, tragically, the professionals that we have today, uh, all of their textbooks were written by evolutionists and uh, contain so-called scientific proof that is not proof at all. I remember back when I was a child or a young individual going to school that when the subject of evolution came up, it was always referred to as the theory of evolution. But now, when it is presented, they say the facts of evolution show that it's this way. Well, there are no facts that support evolution. There's no uh, missing link been found. There's been attempts by uh, dishonest individuals to create missing links, like the Piltdown Man, the Nebraska Man, and many others that turned out to be pure hoaxes. Sadly, there are those who insist on making everything fit into the so-called scientific uh, history of planet Earth. And uh, when they do that, they, of course, leave reality and truthfulness behind. And people have to look for themselves uh, at the evidence, and they must pray, because God will enlighten our minds and help us understand the truth but only if we ask him. And we must ask him in the name and blood of his son because that is the provision that has been made for all of us.